My name is Stephen Gottlieb, and I made up the mathematical proof video. At this point, I would just love for you to sit back and view a sample demonstration which I made up. That way you get to see a little bit of my teaching style. Before I actually solve the problem that I'm going to work on, I want to talk about why mathematical induction works. What are the steps? And again, why do they work? Suppose that I show that a mathematical statement is true for n equal 1. And before we go any further, when you do mathematical induction, you're always proving things for integers. The statement is only true for integers, 5 or above, or 1 or above. Not rational numbers, not fractions, just positive integers. So we show a statement is true for 1, n equal 1. Now we assume that the statement is true for n equal some integer. And that integer should be at least 1. Is it true for any integer? Maybe yes, maybe no. All we know for now is that it's true when k is 1. It's only true for 1. But nonetheless, we assume it true for any integer. And then we show that the statement is true for not k, but the very, very next integer, k plus 1. Okay. So now why does this work? Well, we know that it's true for 1. It's true for 1. Now, what we showed using step 2 and 3 is that if it's true for any integer, if it is true for an integer, then it is true for the next integer. If it's true for 7, we show it is true for 8. But we don't know that it's true for 7. All we know is that it's true for 1. Ah, so if it's true for 1, it's true for the next integer, which is 2. Now we know it's true for 2, as well as 1, but we know it's true for 2. Well, if it's true for any integer, we show that it's true for the next integer. And it is true for 2. So it's true for 3. And if it's true for 3, we know that it's true for the next integer. And so on. It's true for 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and 9 and so on. Okay. The only modification or variation of this method of doing induction proofs is you don't have to, a statement doesn't have to be valid for the first few integers. A statement might be true for n equals 4 and above. That is, a statement might be true for 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 10 forever. So, you assume that is, you show it's true for 4, assume it's true for k, where k is at least 4, and then you show if it's true for k, 4 or above, then it is true for the next integer. So, if it's true for 4, which step 1 verified, then it's true for 5, and 6, and then 7. If it's true for 7, it's true for the next integer, 8, and 9, and 10, forever. This is the method to do a proof by induction. So let's actually do one. Suppose we want to show or prove the following. We want to show that 4 times n is, oops, is less than 2 to the n, where n is an integer, but only from 5 and above. So the first step is we want to show that it's true for 5. Okay? n equals 5. So let's not write 4. n is equal to 5. So we want to show that this is true. We want to show that 4 times n, which is 20, 
is it less than, is it less than 2 to the 5, which I claim is 32. 2 to the 5th, it just means to multiply 2 by itself 5 times. 4 times 4 is 16, times 2 is 32. So, yep, 20 is less than 32. Okay, so now, step 2 is you assume that this statement is true where n equals k. Assume that 4k is less than 2 to the k. Step 3 is to show that when k becomes k plus 1, so 4 times, not k, but k plus 1, is less than 2, not to the k, but to the k plus 1. We want to show that. Is that statement true? And if it, and this is all for k is bigger than or equal to 5. Okay. Now, want to verify this. So, now, what you do to show such a statement is true is you can use mathematics. Anything that's allowed. You can divide both sides by 7, you can add 9 to both sides, you can do whatever you want, and you are allowed to use their assumption. Okay, it is not common knowledge that 4k is less than 2 to the k, and if it were, then there'd be nothing to prove. Okay, so let's start with the left side. 4 times k plus 1. Well, this is 4k plus 4. Now, usually, not always, you use the induction step. Forget the plus 4 for just a moment. We know that 4k is less than 2 to the k. And we add 4 to both sides. Now, sometimes we should think about other ways of looking at 2 to the k plus 1. For example, it's 2 times 2 to the k. Remember, there's an understood 1 by the exponent and for 2. And in multiplication, if the bases are the same, you add the exponents. 1 plus k, you keep the same base, and you add the exponents. There's the same base, and 1 plus k is the same as k plus 1. Now, let's get rid of that power. Now, when you multiply something like this by itself two times, now I don't care what this is, get over that. If you multiply this by itself two times, that's the same as adding it to itself two times. And the reason I want to write 2 to the k plus 1 like this is because I have part of it. There it is. If I can show, now forget the 2 to the k for a moment. If I can show that 4 is less than 2 to the k, well then I can add 2 to the k to both sides. But yes, 4 is less than 2 to the k. Remember, k is at least 5. Now, 2 to the 5 is 32. And 2 to the 6 is 2 times 2 to the 5, which is greater than 32. You take 32 and multiply it by 2, it gets bigger. 2 to the 7 is 2 times 2 to the 6. But 2 to the 6 is bigger than 32. So 2 times that is bigger than 32. You keep multiplying by 2, it's going to be bigger than 32. 2 to the k is bigger than 32 if k is bigger than 5. I can say equals 2 to the k is at least 32 if k is at least 5. Well, our k is at least 5. This is at least 32. 
So right now, comparing these two, they're equal. They both have 2 to the k. And the left side I added 4. And the right side I added 32 or more. I added more than 4 to the right side. Okay. Now, you add the same thing to itself two times. You get two times that common thing. 2 times 2 to the k. Think of an exponent of 1 there. You get 2 to the k plus 1. Well, this is equal to this, which is less than that, which is less than that, which equals this, which equals 2 to the k plus 1. That is 4 times k plus 1 is less than 2 to the k plus 1. So 4 times k plus 1 is less than 2 to the k plus 1. But that's exactly what I wanted to show. It's exactly what I wanted to show. So the proof is done. And we now know that 4 times any integer is less than 2 to that integer as long as the integer is 5 or above. If it's less than 5, it may not work. Try four, try three. It won't work. Now, it might work, say, for one. Four times one is four. And two to the one is two. You know, four is not less than two. So it didn't work for one. Two. Four times two is eight. 2 squared is 4. 8 is less than 4? No. Okay, it only works for 5 and above. Now, just for the record, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It might work for 3. Not 1, not 2, works for 3, not 4, but then 5 and above. Well, that's what I wanted to prove. It works for 5 and above. Nobody ever said it didn't work for 3. Okay. This completes the sample demonstration. Hope you learned the concept of mathematical induction. Hope you now understand how to do this proof using mathematical induction. Try other problems using mathematical induction. I'm sure you can do it. Most of all, I want to wish you great success and doing mathematical proofs. They're always fun and challenging. And want to also thank you for viewing my video to the very end. Thank you.